Lesson 2.8, the at least once rule. Our objective is to be able to use the at least once rule to find the probability of independent events. So let's start by defining a rule that's going to help us find the probability of independent events happening at least once. The at least once rule relies on the fact that an event is either going to happen at least once or it's never going to happen. One of those two things is certain to be the case. So their probabilities add up to one. So the, the probability of an event happening at least once plus the probability of that event never happening is equal to one. So we can find the probability of an event happening at least once by finding the probability that that event never happens and then subtracting it from one. So the rule is this, suppose the probability of an event A occurring in one trial is P of A. If all trials are independent, the probability that event A occurs at least once in N trials is this formula. So the probability of an event occurring of at least one event A in N trials is equal to one minus the probability of A never occurring in N trials. Or in other words, it's one minus the probability of not A to the nth power. So we'll be able to see this a little better in a few examples. Our first example asks us to find the probability of getting at least one heads when we toss three coins. So um, the first thing we need to do here is find the probability of not getting any heads at all. In other words, the probability of getting three tails in a row. And that probability is going to be one half. That's the probability of getting one tails or of not failing to get a heads the first time um, times one half times one half. So we're flipping this coin three times. Um, and altogether, that's going to be one eighth. So that's the probability of not getting any heads. Now, the probability of getting at least one heads is going to be one minus one eighth, which is seven eighths. So that's our probability of getting at least one heads when we toss three coins. And this should make sense. It, if we think about all the possible outcomes when we toss three coins. We've got uh, heads, 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 or heads, heads, tails, or heads, tails, heads, or heads, tails, tails, or tails, heads, heads, or tails, heads, tails, or tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails, tails. Um, there's at least one heads in seven of these. There's at least one heads here, 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 and here. The only one um, that doesn't give us at least one heads is this, this one here where we get all three tails. So there, our probability is seven out of the eight outcomes give us uh, at least one heads. Our second example asks us to find the probability of a region experiencing at least one 100-year flood in the, during the next 100 years. And we're making a couple of assumptions with this one. First, we're assuming that by 100-year flood, we mean that there's a 1 in 100 chance of a flood of that type happening in any given year. And we're also assuming that these events are independent. So the whether or not a 100-year flood occurs in one year is not going to affect the probability that it's going to occur the next year or in any subsequent year. All right, so the first thing we need to do is figure out what's the probability that a 100-year flood does not occur this year. So there's a 1 in 100 chance or a 0.01 probability that a 100-year flood will occur this year. So there's a 0.99 or 99% chance that it won't occur this year. So that's a probability of 0.99. That's just for one year. That's the probability that a 100-year a flood won't occur this year. Now, 
um, we need to figure out the probability that a 100-year flood won't occur any time in the next 100 years. So these are independent events, and this is and probability, so we're just going to take this 0.99 and multiply it by itself 100 times. So this is going to be 0.99 to the 100th power. That's going to give us the probability that a 100-year flood will not occur any time in the next 100 years. Now, uh, to find the probability that a 100-year flood does occur at least once, we're going to subtract this probability from 1. And if we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get uh, a probability of approximately 0.6. So there's about a 63% chance that a 100-year flood is going to occur sometime in the next 100 years. For our last example, we're told that you purchase 10 lottery tickets for which the probability of winning a prize on a single ticket is 1 in 10. And we're asked to find the probability that at least one of the 10 tickets that we purchased is a winner. All right, so the first thing we need to do is figure out the probability that a ticket is not a winner. So the probability that a ticket is a winner is one out of 10. So the probability that it's not a winner is nine out of 10. So let's start there. If we just have one ticket, then our probability that it's not a winner is nine tenths. Or um, it might be easier if we're plugging this into a calculator to call this nine tenths like that, 0.9. That's the probability that each individual ticket is not a winner. And there's 10 of them, and these are independent events. So we're going to multiply this 0.9 times 0.9, which is the probability that the second ticket isn't a winner times 0.9 again uh, for the third ticket, and so on through the 10 tickets. So we're going to multiply 0.9 by itself 10 times, and that will give us the probability that none of our tickets are a winner. And if we subtract that from 1, that's going to give us the probability that at least one of the tickets is a winner. And that's going to give us a, a probability of approximately 0.651. So there's about a 65% chance that at least one of these tickets is going to be a winner.